The VFX world has changed forever and there's a brand new ChatGPT competitor on the market. Welcome to your AI film news of the week. I want to kick things off by talking about the brand new Pika Labs 1.0 model that is slowly rolling out to the public. The model is absolutely incredible. So we've had a chance to play around with the Pika 1.0 model this last week and it's really, really fun. Let me show you a quick little demo. So it's a very easy user experience. Essentially, you have the ability to type in a prompt and get a text to video result. But what I really like is having the ability to upload video. So I have this very quick clip of a volcano that I got from a stock website. And I actually want this to be an establishing shot for a fantasy film. Well, with Pika Labs 1.0, that is super easy. So I'm just going to select that footage and bring it into Pika Labs. Once it's inside, you can go to the Modify Region button and select the area that you want to modify. So in this instance, I'm going to prompt in a medieval castle. We also have the ability to go in and adjust a few more settings. So for example, we can add in negative prompts. I'll add in a very quick string of negative prompts like bad quality, noisy, things like that. Stuff we don't want to see in our final result. You also have the ability to adjust the consistency with the text, which basically brings more or less of your text direction into the final result. I think the default setting typically works the best. And that's all there is to it. Now you just hit the button and wait to see your results. Here is the raw footage of the castle scene. The output has this castle right next to the lava. It looks really cool and this other rendition of the scene also has a castle. So you can see this isn't exactly silver screen quality just yet, but it is absolutely incredible, and this technology will be the underlying technology that is used for set extensions in the future. So I'm really excited to share with you a few of our test results that we've been able to come up with so far. I really think there's quite a few different use cases that you will have with Pika Labs 1.0. So the first is with changing environments and customizing your scenes specifically for advertising to localize the clips and where they live. So for example, we can change the background of footage like this one. So in this shot, we've changed the background to what is basically kind of a fictitious version of Dubai. In this one, we have an out of focus downtown Los Angeles scene. And in this one, we have New York City. So you can see that very easily you can customize and begin to change your actual footage for the region or the specific story that you're trying to tell. We can also expand our scene. So I have this clip from stock footage that's basically of this ship flying through space. And after we throw it into Pika Labs, you can see we've actually expanded the frame and it's been able to interpret the 3D digital assets and expand it outward. We also have the ability to put elements into our scenes. So I have this shot of this diver underwater and now we can prompt in a shark and now it is just a, uh, a terrifying experience. And Pika is really helping us see what the future of VFX will be like. So again, I have this clip of this ship in space. Looks pretty cool, but I actually went into Pika and I wanted to see if we could make the ship on fire. And this is one of the results that it gave us. So pretty interesting. You can begin to see some of the particles that are coming off the ship. There's fire, there's smoke. Obviously there's a space, so I don't know how photorealistic uh, and accurate that actually is, but it is a pretty interesting effect considering that all we had to do was draw over our ship and then just explain to Pika what we're looking for. And the same is true with this clip here. You can see that the ship is now on fire and flying away. I also have one more example I want to show you. So we have this clip of kind of this war scene here, someone walking through a trench and then using Pika Labs, we can in paint over the top. And now we have this dirt and debris that's popping up, you know, just kind of filling in the frame with VFX simulations. So it's very easy to see how Pika Labs 1.0 technology is the very beginning of the future of filmmaking. Pretty soon, VFX artists will be using in-painting and outcropping on Hollywood films. I also want to give a shout out to Martin Harlan who put together this incredibly fun demonstration of match action using Pika Labs. He puts on a coat, a hat, he uses his uh, magic wand to change the scene, and I think it's a great demo of what this tool is capable of. 
Last week, we talked about a brand new model called Stable Diffusion XL Turbo that essentially can create images basically in real time. There's been some people that have been able to create realistic images at 150 frames per second. So I want to show you a quick demo. You'll find a link to this website below. It's completely free. We can just type in a prompt. So I'm going to say cinematic still of a dog at the beach. And you can see we have a dog here and the images are rendering almost in real time. There's about a quarter of a second delay here and we can add in our prompt uh, just like we would in any other tool. So a uh, cinematic still of a dog at the beach, let's say at sunset, and we can say that it's actually a chihuahua. And there you go, you have a cinematic image. Now, is this image as good as the ones you'll get from Mid Journey? No, but the fact that it's basically rendering in real time is a huge advantage. And I could see a scenario where you want to render out a ton of different images and pick and choose the right one for a quick project as opposed to getting absolute photorealism like you get inside of Mid Journey. Not to be outdone, Meta also announced quite a few new AI tools last week. And the big one I wanna talk about is Meta's image generation tool. You can get to it by going to imagine.meta.com and we can say the same thing, a cinematic still of a dog at the beach and generate. And now you can see we have four images of a dog at the beach. All of these are photorealistic and very interesting. Now you don't have the ability to customize the aspect ratio or really adjust and fine tune a lot of settings in here. So it's not amazing for a day-to-day -day filmmaking project, but it is cool to see that there's more of these image models popping up and making the landscape more competitive, which ultimately makes the tools even better. Some researchers this last week came out with a technology that is essentially stable diffusion for voices. And it's really, really interesting. So the thing that makes this model really interesting isn't just that the voices sound absolutely realistic. It's that it can actually be trained on as little as two seconds of information. So if you upload two seconds of someone talking, it can duplicate their voice. I want to show you a quick example. So here is a clip of the reference audio that they uploaded. But after a dip in sales, growth was recorded. Very quick, right? Well, here's that same voice actor actually reading the line. Since then, physicists have found that it is not a reflection, but refraction by the raindrops, which causes the rainbows. Okay. And now here is the language model interpreting that two seconds of reference audio and generating the exact same result. Since then, physicists have found that it is not reflection, but refraction by the raindrops, which causes the rainbows. Obviously, that has huge implications for the future of language models and text-to-voice technology. Going forward, if you just have a few seconds of someone talking, you can essentially clone their voice. So I wanna play a little game with you. Here is some reference audio of someone talking. Suggestions of the action being a punishment were dismissed. And now I'm going to play you back two different clips and I want you to figure out which one is the real clip of someone talking and which one is the language model that was duplicated off that three seconds of someone talking. Here's A. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. And B. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. Okay, if you think you know which one's real and which one's fake, let us know in the comments below. I'd also like to say congratulations to everyone who submitted your film for the AI Holiday Film Competition. The quality of the film submitted for this competition is absolutely incredible, and we will announce the winners next week. This last week, Google also announced their Gemini model, which the media is calling the ChatGPT killer. So it's really interesting. We've been testing it out, and essentially the new Gemini model is going to have three different versions. A nano version, which will essentially run locally on Android devices like Android phones. A pro model that runs inside of Bard and is currently available. And there's an ultra model, which will be coming out early next year, that is essentially supposed to be much more powerful than ChatGPT. Google has said that it has outperformed ChatGPT in 30 of 32 tests. But again, that is not currently available on the market just yet. I want to encourage you to test out Gemini. 
by just going to Bard and the new model is already up and ready to go. They also released a very interesting demo video that showcases Gemini in action. It shows that Gemini will be able to generate images, music, games. It can actually interpret footage and understand what is happening. And it's a really cool demonstration of what Google has up their sleeve. Now, is this a chat GPT killer? I don't think so at all, because remember Sam Altman was temporarily fired from OpenAI due to alleged accusations that the team is working on something so advanced that it's making their investors a little nervous. So I don't think that OpenAI is too worried about this new Google competitor, but we have found that ChatGPT is still slightly more creative than Google's Gemini Pro at this point, but that's not to say that when the Ultra model comes out early next year, that it won't actually be better than ChatGPT for creativity and screenwriting. At this point, it's really anyone's guess. I actually put together two scripts, one inside of ChatGPT and one inside of Gemini using the exact same prompt. And you can compare the two by clicking the link below this video. I'd love to know which one you think is more creative. We also came across this really interesting experiment using 010, which is a fashion tool that allows you to try on clothes by just using an application. While I don't think there's any immediate filmmaking applications right now, it's very easy to see how this type of technology is going to be the future of cinematography. Essentially, you will be able to change your subjects or your background actors clothes just by going into an application and selecting which clothes they should wear. It's really interesting and I'd be curious to see how this technology develops in the future. In research news, there's a tool that has really been taking the internet by storm. It's called Magic Animate. Basically, all you have to do is upload a reference image then upload reference video, and the tool will actually animate the image using the reference footage. So naturally, because this is an AI tech demo, there's tons of just TikTok girls dancing, but the results are actually really impressive, especially as the subjects move around. It really does a good job at rendering elements that were not actually visible in the reference image. So very soon, you're going to be able to upload a mid-journey image and then some reference footage underneath and actually have your images act in a very realistic way. There was also another tool called Animate Anyone that essentially did the exact same thing. The code is on GitHub and naturally they did a TikTok girl dancing video as the demo, but you get the idea. It really does seem like this technology is going to change the way that we animate going forward. Amazon also announced that they have a brand new AI image creation model as well. We haven't been able to test this tool just yet, but from the sound of it, it sounds like Amazon is really trying to make this an enterprise tool that is available to companies. And they also are saying that they will take on any legal responsibility if any clients using their tool get sued or runs into any copyright issues. Amazon is also introducing invisible watermarking into their images to basically help AI tools disseminate what is a real image and what is an AI generated image. In editing news, an app developer named Morton Just came out with a demo of a really interesting application that allows you to edit video just by typing in words. Essentially, editors are able to type in prompts like cropping and fading and changing the color grading, and the editing application will actually intuitively change the clip without you having to click on anything. It's really interesting to think about this multimodal experience and how it may play into video editing in the very near future. There are so many automatic video editing tools popping up recently, and pretty soon it's just going to be a matter of time where you just upload your footage and get a decent rough cut that you can then go in and edit even further. Runway and Getty Images have teamed up to create a video model specifically for enterprise customers. So essentially what's going to happen is Getty will power the images and Runway will power the video. The Getty Images will allow users to train their data sets on specific products or people. So let's say you own a candle company, you can take pictures of your candle and then prompt it into different scenes using Getty Images as the base AI model, and then that will be converted over into Runway's video model to actually make it move. 
So it's not hard to see how this is very much going to be the future of advertising. There was also this really fun trend this last week where people were uploading video game stills and using tools like Magnific or Krea to up-res and get more quality to basically make them realistic. There's some really fun examples using Grand Theft Auto and Tim at Theoretically Media also did a quick test that I thought was really fun. And Tim is a friend of Curious Refuge and will be judging the AI holiday film competition next week. I'd also like to wish the best of luck to everyone who is joining us for the December session of AI filmmaking. We have so many new updates from building pitch decks to visual effects using artificial intelligence, and we can't wait to see the work that everyone creates inside of the course. We actually just hosted our very first Q&A live stream inside of the course, and it was an absolute blast. So we'll be doing that regularly going forward. In voice acting news, there's an interesting story where the Calm Meditation app basically cloned Jimmy Stewart's voice, the actor from It's a Wonderful Life, you know, the old Christmas movie, and essentially brought him back to life to tell Christmas stories to people to help calm them down. Now, Jimmy Stewart has been dead for 26 years, so Calm reached out to Jimmy Stewart's estate and got permission to use his voice. And really, I think this is very telling about the future of generating images and voices inside the world of entertainment. I also saw a really interesting competitor to Magnific and Krea this last week. Essentially, you can upload a Renaissance painting and in just a few seconds, it turns it into a beautiful masterpiece. <laughs> we also came across this really interesting demo on X where someone took Comfy AI and Stable Fast and did what is virtually real-time conversion of Harry Potter into an anime style. It's almost like that rock, paper, scissors project that Corridor Digital put together a couple years ago, but this one is actually in real time. Now it's not perfect, but it is really interesting to think about how this underlying technology will more than likely be the thing that creates real-time video projects in the near future. Leonardo AI also came out with a new tool called Live Canvas, which is very similar to the Krea AI art converter tool that has been very popular over the last few weeks. It's really interesting. So all you have to do is draw a scene. So I'll just draw this blue scene here, just like that, and just paint in what you wanna see. So we'll do a tree. And the thing that makes this really interesting is you can turn down the creativity and we'll actually change the scene or you can turn it up to really change it to something else. They also have presets that are pretty interesting. So you could change this to photorealistic photography and you know adjust it further, or you could go in and change it to let's say cinematic. So obviously this technology is huge for the future of concept art. And that brings us to our AI Films of the Week. So I want to kick things off by showing you this quick little film demo from William Bartlett who is actually an executive creative director at Framestore, which is one of the biggest VFX studios in the world. He used Midjourney, Cree AI, Photoshop Generative Fill, Photoshop for depth maps, and then he used Nuke to kind of do some parallaxing animation in the scene here. And the result is highly cinematic and it looks really interesting. Now it's really interesting because this is somebody from the traditional VFX world utilizing AI to tell stories. This is only the beginning and when VFX studios really start to embrace AI technologies, the work that they're going to be able to create will be absolutely incredible. I will note that the depth mapping techniques that William shows you inside of his demo can actually be accomplished inside of After Effects as well. And we actually show that inside of our course in one of the lessons, how you can basically take the depth maps and convert them into parallaxed footage for doing drone shots and things like that. Our second video comes from Offbeat Facts, who put together this really interesting Saw parody. I think they did a good job at creating this kind of 1980s supermarket world that looks really fantastic. Our next film is called Humans from Reagan McConey. It's really funny because it is basically a Sasquatch looking for evidence of humans and the storytelling is really good. They really create an interesting world and there's a twist at the end that is very fun. Our next film is called Wasted and it was created by Jesse. 
and the sound design is really nice in this film and it really looks like a real film. Obviously, it's still artificial intelligence. There's still a few things that are a little messed up and they purposefully left the text with the incorrect spelling, which I thought was a really funny touch. It really sets up a really interesting Sicario scene and there's actually a lot of character development for artificial intelligence. So fantastic work on this film, Jesse. And finally, our student highlight of the week comes from Joe Berg AI, who put together this project called The Cosmic Yarn. It's basically a cat that goes on a space exploration journey, and in the end, they find a beautiful ball of cosmic yarn. It's a really fun story, fantastic work. Thank you so much for watching this episode of AI Film News, and again, thank you for helping us get to 100,000 subscribers. We want to help as many people as possible grow in their AI filmmaking skills. So be sure to subscribe if you want more videos. You can also subscribe to our newsletter to get film news delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.